Well, Rainbow Six Extraction officially released two years ago today, and as someone who was a fan of this game, I think I should make a video taking a look back at this game and sharing my thoughts on the game two years into it, especially since further content is no longer coming to it, and the overall situation which has happened around this game. And yes, I did enjoy this game, but I don't think it's perfect, and I have plenty of issues which I'll talk about. However, I did like it enough to buy a jacket based on it and wear it to Siege Invitational 2023. I'm probably one of the only people in the world who even owns this jacket, let's be honest. So for those who do not know, all the way back in early 2018, with the release of Operation Chimera in Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft decided to do something a little different. In this season, they released a limited time event, I believe it was only available for 3 or 4 weeks, and this event was called Outbreak. And it basically asked the question, what if the world's greatest counterterrorism unit fought an unknown alien threat? Now, a lot of people may have checked out at this, they thought that's way too far-fetched for what the Rainbow Six franchise should do. I will say it's not canon to the main story. This didn't happen in the main story. This is a separate timeline. It was purely a hypothetical situation and it was done for fun. So if you were in the same boat as me and thought, hey, this is kind of cool. I'd like to see where this goes. Then you probably enjoyed the Outbreak event. It was a very interesting change of pace from Rainbow Six Siege. And with it being a free event inside of the game itself, you know, you didn't have to install anything else. It was part of this new season, so it was really interesting to try. But after the time of the event period ended, that was it gone. Operation Chimera continued as usual with the brand new ops Lion and Finca, Lion being deadly overpowered. The Rainbow Six Siege went to continue on as usual, never having anything on the caliber of the Outbreak event again. Well that was until a year later in 2019 at E3, Ubisoft surprised us all with a reveal trailer for a game known as Rainbow Six Quarantine, highlighting operators such as Ella and Vigil in the trailer. This little teaser was extremely cool and everyone was like, whoa, they've taken the Outbreak event and turned it into an entire full-fledged game. This is awesome. And after this initial teaser, Ubisoft kind of just went radio silent for years. However, it was clear that the Outbreak event was used as sort of a tester if audiences would like a similar game like this to be fully developed into its own standalone title. And so time would pass. We hardly heard anything Thing about this game, a lot of people were feared that it was cancelled, and that was until people started to get invites to a closed test for Rainbow Six Parasite, which was the new updated name from Rainbow Six Quarantine, due to the word quarantine in 2020 becoming a part of people's daily vocabulary. I think Ubisoft rightfully just wanted to change the name because of current events. Well, after this initial testing for Rainbow Six Parasite, we would stop hearing about the game again for a little while longer, until Rainbow Six Extraction, its third and final name was revealed to the world. Now, the cinematic trailer they showed off with this was extremely cool. I was very hyped. However, in the same day that this was shown off to the world, it turns out that Ubisoft had been working with a few content creators before this, giving them some early access to gather gameplay so they can release a video on the same day as the reveal. Now, I will give some credit to Ubisoft here. I wasn't one of these creators, I wasn't big enough to even be considered back then, but the creators they did pick for this, it seemed Seems like these creators didn't have a script given to them, they were allowed to talk their mind freely on this game, and they weren't under any obligation to only talk positive about this game. Because a lot of them didn't talk positive about the game. Many large content creators such as Bikini Bodhi flat out said that it was just boring. Now I didn't play the version of the game they played, apparently the only version they got to play and record was on the easiest difficulty, which self admittedly as someone who does enjoy the game, is boring. However after this, the game would be delayed a little bit longer until it finally released in January of 2022, two years ago from when this video was being made. And the game released, and that's all I can kind of say about it. No one was really crazy about it. I enjoyed the game. I picked it up day one, and I made my content on it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing it in my off time and on stream, and I still think the game is pretty fun. But my major issue with this game, which hasn't been addressed, and the game is not getting any more updates, if you're not aware, they have just stopped. They gave us two operators, which was expansion for Echo and an expansion which brought Zofia. So two additional operators from the original lineup, four events which now currently get reused and rotated, and a few secondary gadgets, no new maps, and as far as we are aware on Ubisoft's behalf, that is them done with this game. We knew more content was planned. However, it seems like way before this, Ubisoft were ready just to get this game out there and then discontinue it as fast as possible. 
Now, I have no proof that that is what they were doing, but it definitely feels like it. And I wonder if this decision was made in 2020 or 2021 when there was issues, of course, worldwide and, of course, development time and everything was a bit stretched and you had to have people working from home. Whether it was then or after when those content creators pretty much ripped the game to shreds and there was quite a lack of public interest in this game anymore. I really do wonder if Ubisoft were like, right, we have a finished product here. Forget making any more expansions out of the two we already have completed and let's just make our money back on this project. Because right now, two years into the game's life cycle, it's the same amount of content which was there over a year ago, which for a live service game isn't very good. Yes, there is replayability, but I can only replay the same operators, the same objectives on the same maps so many times before I get bored. I really would have wished before they cancelled any further content for this game that they would have just given us a horde mode, like a wave based mode, like classic COD zombies. Then I would have still been coming back to this game, I would have still been streaming it even after content has been cancelled, but unfortunately that never came. And I do think it's a shame because I think Rainbow Six Extraction is a game that, given a bit more time, would have been very appealing to more people. I definitely think one of my biggest issues with the game is the level of difficulty. There is one mode which I honestly do only really enjoy playing in this game, and that is a mode called Wall to Wall, which only appears every few weeks, so it's a shame in that regard that it's not even a permanent mode. Which I think is Rainbow Six Extraction at its best. There's an unlimited spawn rate of enemies until you get to the next zone or the extraction point, and it really highlights how well the siege mechanics come into play when enemies like this. It's not a forgiving game, it's not like COD Zombies, and this isn't to diss COD Zombies, well, classic COD Zombies. COD Zombies nowadays is pretty awful. But you know, in COD Zombies, you get hit by a zombie, you just quickly run away from them, and you can regen health. That doesn't happen in this game. The damage lasts until you get a medkit or you have a healer on your team. The enemies hit hard, and if you make one mistake, that's you dead. And I would have really liked them to expand on this because it just played so well, it was exhilarating, it was fun, and it was nice to see the operators from Siege and how their gadgets can be used in a different aspect. They're not attack versus defense training, they're on the same team in this game. Yes, they're in the same team in Rainbow Six Siege, if you guys don't know, attack and defense, they're just a training exercise, they're all one big team, but in this game, we got to see them act as one big team, fighting a different enemy. I found that very interesting in how they adapted the gadgets to fit that. For example, Jaeger's ADS doesn't just stop projectiles, it's actually aggressive and will hit enemies as well. The air jabs will hit enemies so hard it can kill them. Gadgets have been tweaked to fit this game and it is really interesting to see that. Now, I want to talk about something which I do heavily dislike about Rainbow Six Extraction, and I think this really did hurt his image as well, and that is his art style. Sometime between the outbreak event which happened in Rainbow Six Siege and its successor, Rainbow Six Extraction, there was a clear shift in direction and art style. Now, Outbreak and Rainbow Six Extraction take place in the same universe. What we see in Outbreak is the initial impact of this outbreak. An old Russian spacecraft has fallen back to Earth with an alien parasite in it. This parasite Parasite breaks free and starts infecting people in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Rainbow are called in to be the cleanup crew here and take out these infected people. The outbreak event in Rainbow Six Siege was dark, the enemies looked like infected people, with the stronger ones being these more advanced parasites. It was gritty, there was much more enemies, and it just felt harder and more exhilarating. That bit of Rainbow Six Extraction I was talking about that made me enjoy the game its most was at its best in the outbreak event. So you went from the outbreak event with with this sort of sci-fi Soviet astronaut outbreak in New Mexico, it was dark, it was gritty, and you're playing as the world's greatest counter-terrorism unit to fight against it. To then moving over into Rainbow Six Extraction, where most of the maps are set at day, the enemies aren't nearly as visually impressive, they kind of just look bland and not as cool as their outbreak counterparts. The reasoning for this is an outbreak that was the people of Truth or Consequences New Mexico being infected, and you're actually killing killing them, to Rainbow Six Extraction where this is the parasite becoming self-sufficient and not needing a human host, so the enemies in Rainbow Six Extraction are actually just these black goo parasites. And yes, that is the lore reason of the parasite becoming more self-sufficient and it's taking over the world and becoming stronger. But if we're going to be honest for a second, I think we all know the reason why there was an art style change, especially in the enemies. It was clearly to appease foreign censorship laws, and when I say foreign, I'm talking about one country 
century, which I'm sure I don't even need to name when it comes to censorship laws like this. I mean, heck, they tried to do this in Siege itself, and due to backlash, they had to backtrack. But I definitely think that was the reason why the art style suffered in this game, which is truly sad. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I think that is an extremely sad reason. I don't have proof of this, but it's also not really hard to see that. Because I think the art style in the rest of the game is pretty cool. I wish more of the maps were set at night. There was one limited time event called Blackout or something like that, and basically when you started in the match, the power was out and it was dark and it was absolutely sick. I'll see if I can get some old gameplay clips of that, but that was so fun and that should have been the core game to begin with, should have looked like that. But other stuff in the game, such as the React unit, in the lore of this story in this separate universe, Rainbow develop a brand new unit of the team called React, known as the Rainbow Exogenous Analyst and Containment Team. I liked their sort of unique hazmat suits they made for this team as well. In Outbreak, you just had standard yellow hazmat suits, you know, generic ones, but that still looked really cool as well, don't get me wrong. But in Extraction, it's like, well, this parasite has been here for a little bit now, this team has been established inside a rainbow, here is their specialized hazmat suits for the situation. I thought all that stuff was extremely cool, but I definitely think that enemies really just hurt the identity of the game itself. And I also think the fact that a lot of the game modes are just too easy, I don't feel oppressed by these enemies, you know, maybe, maybe this is just me being selfish because I play Siege all the time, I'm used to the mechanics and I'm just, you know, decently skilled at first person shooter games. But outside of this one mode, which I have in the background of my gameplay here, that I don't feel like these enemies are actually a an enemy. I, I feel like I can easily take them out. In this, I actually feel like a threat. I feel like those siege mechanics are actually really coming in here and I'm feeling the weight of it when I have a bunch of enemies on top of me. So I just think gameplay wise and art style identity wise, it just never really knew what it was doing compared to what Outbreak was. Outbreak knew exactly what it wanted to do. We're going to have a few missions inside of Truth or Consequences New Mexico. Team Rainbow operators are going to be deployed there uh, to save a doctor. Jaeger was flying a helicopter and it crashed. You have to save him as well. The enemies were people who were infected. These were people whose lives were lost and that had an impact. Outbreak really did feel like, oh, this place was inhabited. These people are gone. This is a really big issue. And you have to have this cleanup crew to take out this threat. And it visually done it better. And I think Extraction just failed that. The places we're going into in Extraction have already been established by the React team. There's React tech everywhere. You already have these little quarantine points set up by React. You don't really know why you're doing this. The reasons are, oh, you gotta go in and save this medical doctor who was captured. Or you gotta go in and capture this point. Or you gotta go in and do this, do that. And yes, Outbreak was sort of the same premise, but it had its own self-contained story. You were saving someone by the name of Dr. McIntosh. Thermite thought they should have just nuked the town, but Doc being a humanitarian, was like, no, we can't do that. There's still civilians there. We have to save this doctor. Maybe she can find a cure. During these efforts, Jaeger's helicopter gets hit and crashes. Okay, we gotta go save Jaeger now. And by the end of it, they successfully eliminated the threat and truth or consequences. It had its own self-contained story. It knew what it was doing it for for each of the missions, and it had its ending. Whereas Extraction's like, okay, there's an outbreak in San Francisco. There's one here in Alaska. You're gonna go in, you're gonna do these tasks. The same task that you've just done in the other place. We're also going to do it again in this place. Repeat that again. Go play that mission again. Go play that mission again. Yes, there's replayability, but it hardly exists. Extraction would have benefited from a more structural, linear gameplay where you can jump into each mission at any time after initially completing it, with each of these missions having its own self-contained map with an exclusive objective, and instead of running around in circles doing it in some area, it would be more of a push forward from one point to the other. Once you've completed all these missions, it tells a story from start to finish, and as well as this, it would also open up expanded versions of these maps for a horde-based wave mode. When these new operators come in, it introduces another self-contained linear mission, as well as adding that map to the wave-based mode, and you can replay those missions with people online at any time. And when it comes to extraction, you have four main areas with a few self-contained smaller maps inside of them with the same pool of objectives on all of them, randomly picked each time you spawn in. And especially with the difficulty being meh, there's not really a massive sense of risk or achievement. There's substance, which is sometimes fun in the wall-to-wall -wall mode, again, the one I'm playing in the background. But after you've played it a few times, you start to understand, okay, I'm just playing the same objectives on the same maps on repeat. That's it. So, I'll give extraction its due. When the enemies are hard, the mechanics are doing its job, and the oppression is there, this is an exhilarating PvP 
PvE extraction, sure. However, when that only happens about 15% of the game itself, I'm not surprised people are going to get checked out. And when it was done better for free in a game that people already owned four years ago, it kind of brings the point of its existence into question. And a final thing I want to say, I think the menu and UI is very nice in this game. I like how the operators look in the MVP screen, the operator pick screen. I think it looks very clean. Um, not saying it's better than Siege necessarily, but I also don't think it's worse than Siege. I think it does a lot right. And I'd kind of like to see Siege with a little bit of a grittier operator menu like this, but with the way that art style went with Siege, I doubt that will happen. Again, I'm not saying that's for better or for worse. That's just my two cents. But yes, two years on, Rainbow Six Extraction, no more content coming. I thought this game was fun whilst it lasted, but I wouldn't be surprised if the servers go within the next two years. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you still play Extraction? Do you enjoy Extraction? And just your overall thoughts. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. I shall catch you later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.